the idea from these folks is only they should be giving you information. And the Biden administration is very into this. It is despicable and it is authoritarian and it is garbage. And you should be worried about it whether you're on the right or on the left or in the center. You should be worried about it regardless. Because guess what? This game goes both ways. We are now in the midst of a great move from the federal government led by the White House, aided and abetted and fostered by the establishment media to shut down your access to information you want to see. It is that simple. What we are watching right now is an overt, I mean, it's right there in the public eye. It's an overt collusion between the establishment media, which wishes to reestablish its monopoly over informational dissemination, between the media and the Democratic Party, which would like you to only see the crap that the mainstream media is often pushing, and social media, whom both of the aforementioned parties are now going to push into shutting down your access to information. So to understand how this works, you have to sort of understand briefly the history of how informational dissemination has happened in the United States. So if you go all the way back, the way people used to get their information, the very beginning of the Republic, was a bunch of different partisan papers, and people would subscribe to them, pick them up, they were largely local, and they were pretty openly partisan. There is a reason why, for example, the Arizona Republic was a Republican paper. There is a reason why the Arkansas Democrat Gazette is the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Right? The fact is that you would have all these newspapers and they would have their various partisan spins and that's just the way that it was. Then in the 1920s, there was this move to sort of regularize journalism. And the idea here is that journalism was a process, right? You had to have double sourcing, for example. You had to make sure that every factual claim that you made was objectively verifiable. And that's not a bad thing, but it led to the rise of a professional so-called journalist class which would be fine if they were actually just professionals following the process, the way that scientists are supposed to follow the scientific process. Instead, what this led to was the rise of a cadre of self-described journalists who were supposedly better at this than anybody else. And they stopped doing journalism. They went back to being partisans, but they just didn't tell you. And so for years, for decades in the United States, there, as the media began to nationalize, as the means of transportation became better and the means of communication became better, there was a, a new mode of informational distribution and it was big, like TV, there were only three networks, ABC, NBC, CBS, that was it. And everybody got their news at night from these three networks. As far as major newspapers, there were only a few that were nationally disseminated. It was like the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, that was pretty much it. And so everybody got their information from these very narrow bandwidths of information, right? These very narrow means of distribution. Then came the internet and it exploded all of this. The internet basically allowed anybody to put up news. It was almost a, a reversion to the origins of the Republic. It wasn't local, it was national, but you could go to a wide variety of websites, you could check a wide variety of perspectives, and there was this really rich sort of interplay between how people were writing. It was in the very early days of the internet. Then there was the rise of social media. And social media, as is so often the case, was supposed to facilitate all of this and now has put it in danger. Social media was supposed to give you a one-stop shop for doing all of this. Instead of you having to bookmark 10 pages, if you're older than about 18 years old, you know that this is how people used to do things, right? You'd have a list of bookmarks on the side of your web browser, and then every morning you would check, like the New York Times, Jerusalem Post, you check the Washington Post, and you would check National Review. You'd be able to check all of these things, right? Via the, book, 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 via the bookmarks. Then Facebook, because it aggregated so many eyeballs, because so many people were using Facebook, for example, they've started providing a newsfeed. And the newsfeed, was supposed to basically make bookmarks obsolete. Right? When was the last time you used a bookmark? Right? Nobody uses bookmarks on the internet anymore because instead they have this curated list of things that they read. And that curated list is curated by social media, it's curated by Facebook, it's curated by, for example, Twitter, by your, by your Twitter feed. Okay, so the idea here was that it was supposed to be easier for you to access all the information you wanted to see. The problem was that whereas before, because you were the person who was clicking on all the bookmarks, you were in control of the stuff that you were seeing. Having handed control that over to Facebook or to Twitter for purposes of basically ease, right? You didn't want to click 10 buttons and said you click one and then you just watch the scroll. Now, the Democrats and the media have seen that as all information and informational distribution is re-narrowed into these, these narrow bandwidths, instead of everybody getting their news from a wide variety of sources, now you get your news, quote unquote, from Facebook, and then you click through, right? Once they saw that everybody had to go through Facebook, they realized they could reestablish the monopoly. All they would have to do is simply say to Facebook that Facebook was guilty of deep and abiding sin if they allowed you to see the information you wanted to see. Twitter needed to suppress information that you were not supposed to see. 
It was very important that if you liked information too much that the mainstream media and the Democrats didn't like, that these social media platforms, instead of easing your ability to see information, restrict your ability to see information. So the entire rationale for these social media, these social media networks being in the news business in the first place got reversed. Instead of them making it easier for you to access information, Democrats in the media, seeing that you are now using them almost universally, they decided this is a great way of ensuring that you don't see information. This is a great way of purging these particular outlets of the information, restricting your ability to see them, shadow banning, preventing advertising. It could reestablish their traditional monopoly by using these giant companies. They're going to leverage these giant companies into doing what they wanted. And so you have this bizarre spectacle of the media who are supposed to be the great defenders of the free press. Now, I've never called for CNN to lose its license. I've never called for the New York Times' distribution on Facebook to be reduced because I don't care. It's not my job. But these other outlets will do that. CNN will do that about Fox News. The New York Times will do that about the Daily Wire. NPR will do that about the Daily Wire, as we'll see. The idea from these folks is only they should be giving you information. And if information is obtained from any place else, then Facebook has done something deeply wrong, and they will be the judges of what is good information and what is not good information. And the Biden administration is very into this. This is author authoritarian nonsense. This is authoritarian. They have a book coming out next week called The Authoritarian Moment. It's all about this. This is the, I mean, the timing couldn't be better. It is all about this. It is about the attempt by the media and the Democratic Party using social media to abort your ability to see the information that you want to see in authoritarian fashion. It is ugly, and you should be worried about it whether you're on the right, or on the left, or in the center. You should be worried about it regardless. Because guess what? This game goes both ways. If you were a Republican in office who were saying that Facebook should restrict information from the New York Times, the media would be going apely. But because, they are, because the media are complicit in this now, the media are the greatest weapon against free speech happening in the country right now. The Democratic Party are fully participatory in this because they must have utopia and they will do it at the price of your ability to access information. It is hideous. To understand the origins of the new anti-social media push, the attempt to use social media as a way of restricting informational flow, you have to understand there was a tremendous reversal that happened with regard to left-wing views of social media directly after 2016. So when Trump won in 2016, the social media before that was considered this godsend. You'll recall that there were articles in 2012 about the brilliant use of social media by the Obama administration and the, and the Obama team in the 2012 election. What an amazing job they had done in using social media to reach the people they wanted to reach. And Facebook was a tool for this. You'll remember, Facebook was a tool in the Arab Spring. Facebook was a way for oppressed and suppressed people all over the world to get out their message. Then, Trump won. And suddenly, the Democrats, deeply in need of some sort of narrative to explain away Trump's win, Instead of just saying Hillary Clinton was a horrific candidate, which is why she lost, instead of doing that, the media and the Democrats latched onto a narrative. The narrative was Facebook, Twitter, your social media brethren, all of these giant companies, they were responsible. And the, the way they were responsible is they had not properly policed themselves for things like Russian disinformation. Right? Russian disinformation. This stuff was super dangerous. Now, here's the thing. The Russians did try to intervene in the 2016 election. Their actual activity on Facebook, if you read into the Senate reports, does not even chart in terms of important things that happened with regard to social media in 2016. Like the actual amount of attention their posts were getting was actually low if you know the metrics. But that doesn't matter. The narrative had been set, and the narrative was that these media, these social media outlets were being used as props by cutouts, essentially, from foreign countries. Then something subtle happened. All of these informational outlets, members of the media, the Democrats, they shifted the argument from it's Russian disinformation, meaning actual agitprop put out by a foreign government in order to pervert an American election, which is actually dangerous, and which should be prevented on social media. They moved from that to, from disinformation, to, they just switched one letter, misinformation. Misinformation was anything Democrats didn't like. Now, social media had to step in and prevent misinformation. Not disinformation, right? Disinformation is an actual term that is used in the intelligence community to talk about a foreign government subsidizing agitprop. Misinformation can mean anything. Misinformation can mean the Hunter Biden story a month before the election. Misinformation can mean that you don't think Anthony Fauci did a good job during this pandemic. Misinformation can mean nearly anything, so long as the media call it misinformation, and then call on the federal government to pressure Facebook into preventing its dissemination, you can basically leverage Facebook into doing whatever you want.
but the shift from disinformation to misinformation is deeply important. At the beginning, the social media tech bros, they were kind of resistant to this. They said, yeah, we'd have to do a better job with Russian, Russian disinformation, but the reality is that we are platforms, right? And as platforms, it is not our job to go around trying to discern true from false in a variety of public tech. They're literally a platform in the same way that like your phone line is a platform, right? When you get on your phone line and you tell your wife that you, you'll remember everything at the grocery store and then you don't, that does not make the phone line responsible for you saying something untrue to your wife. Facebook is not responsible. I mean, legally or morally, they're not responsible for people saying things that are untrue and certainly they're not responsible for a subjective claim that some people think is true and some people think is false. And, and at the beginning, Facebook kind of acknowledged this, right? Many of social media heads would say, yeah, we're not responsible for that. Freedom of speech requires that we allow opinions that we may not like and allow dissemination of information that you may think is false, but is actually arguable and we need to have conversations over. And then over time, as the Democrats press, you started to see social media react to the, to the press. They started to react to this. This started last year, particularly during the pandemic, when social media started cracking down on people who suggested, for example, that the Chinese lab leak theory was correct. They started saying, you can't disseminate that, that's false. You can't put that out there. If, if you say on some platforms that a man is a man and a woman is a woman, now, all of a sudden, you could see social media crack down on you. I know people, there's a feminist named Megan Murphy, for example, who was kicked off Twitter for the great sin of saying the man was a man and a woman was a woman. But you started to see the shift from disinformation to misinformation actually activated inside social media. And now it's coming to a head. Now it's coming to a head because Joe Biden, the White House, the media believe that this is their shot to consolidate power forever. They believe that their shot at consolidating power requires a crackdown on informational dissemination. The lever that they will use is they will say that social media are not just bad, they're not just providing you a space to put out things that are false, they are killing people, right? This is always the Democrat and media excuse for cracking down on your freedoms, is that you're quote unquote killing people, right? This is why the, the far left has decided that words are violence, that speech is violence. We have to stop it. If we don't stop it, people will die. And if people will die, then we must use all the weapons at our disposal to prevent that, and that may include suppression of some of your freedoms. And it will certainly include pressuring these social media companies into shutting down the flow of information. This is the exact argument that Joe Biden is now making with regard to... It is despicable and it is authoritarian and it is garbage. Again, I'm gonna pitch my book, The Authoritarian Moment. Shameless plug right there because it is all about this, how the left is weaponizing America's institutions. If you want the country to fall apart, if you want us not to be able to have conversations, this is precisely the way to do it. But this is not about having a conversation. This is about shutting down a conversation from people who are very much afraid you might get your information from a place they do not approve. They don't just want to be quote unquote journalistic gatekeepers who prevent untruth. They want to be gatekeepers of content who prevent you from seeing anything you don't like, period, end of story. This is their goal.